Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here with my buddy Guinness, who you can't see, but he's asleep with his head on my lap, to talk about the winner of the 2021 Booker Prize. It was just announced, and I actually managed to watch most of the prize announcement, which was fun because I'm in the middle of my work day, given that it's evening in the UK, but one o'clock now it's two o'clock in the afternoon my time and anyway I, I got to hear the excerpts from the other finalists that were read really interesting excerpts we'll talk about the other finalists a little bit as well but the winner of the 2021 booker prize was damon galgut's the promise this in some ways felt like a foregone conclusion because from the moment it made the long list people were talking about how damon galgut had been shortlisted for the prize twice i think it was shortlisted possibly just long listed but i believe he was shortlisted twice before and did not win so it felt like this was sort of his time and that this was a book that a lot of people uh, had resonated with and could potentially go the distance for him which turned out to be correct and then when he made the shortlist again it seemed like that was the conversation and this is something that happens with the academy awards as well where when someone has been putting in the work and been nominated once or twice before a conversation starts to build about like when is it actually going to happen when are they going to get the prize so it felt like that kind of happened to him and yet there was enough support behind all of the finalists that it felt like there was a potential or a possibility that it could have gone any different direction bewilderment by richard powers seemed to be building a lot but it's it's hard to gauge properly because that book was just released and it, it's hard to tell if some of that was due to the fact that it, it's probably the most current book and people are really talking about it right now. So it's hard to tell if it was actually building momentum or if it was really kind of making a case for itself with the jury. And uh, obviously speculation for the prize happens outside of the prize itself and the jurors who read each book three times they mentioned. While some will definitely say it was a predictable win, I think this seems like a good win. I am on hold for this book at my library and I'm really hoping that it will come up soon because I'm very eager to read it and the promise that is and I it, it just sounds like a really interesting book and I had known the premise of the book which is that a uh, white family in South Africa promises their house to uh, their black maid and over the years that promise is left unfulfilled and it's about the tension that comes from that I knew that a funeral was the framing device I don't think I necessarily realized that there were four funerals that were used as a framing device but that was something that they talked about at great length and they read excerpts from all of the books. And of course, if you're reading an excerpt, you're gonna choose the section that's gonna put your best foot forward without necessarily giving away the plot. And uh, the section that they read from The Promise seemed kind of gripping. And I am really looking forward to reading that as well. But all of the excerpts seemed to go really well and really got me more interested in these books. I think this was a very strong shortlist that they had this year in 2021. And one of the things that was also nice about it was that they got Douglas Stewart, who won last year for Shuggy Bane, there to talk about his book. He actually, he did not announce the winner, but he got to present the uh, statue to Damon Galgett. And he got to have a little bit of a QA. and a He got to have a sit down with Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall. And that was nice because it, it would have been all too easy for him to sort of lose the spotlight since his prize was given during lockdown and he won while sitting on probably on his living room couch <laughs> and uh he mentioned that he had been doing press tours and interviews all around the world from his apartment and how kind of surreal that was and uh, at the same time kind of nice and it, I, i'm a fan I'm looking forward to his next book, which has been announced. The title of it is uh, Young Mungo. And I really appreciated his thoughts on literature. I, it never would have even occurred to me that he had thought of Thomas Hardy, specifically Tess of the Durbervilles, as a sort of influence because of the way the men treat Tess in that book, which I have not read, but I have seen the movie. And uh, the way the men treat Tess and then the way men treat the mother character, Agnes, in Shuggy Bane. And that was really interesting and I thought enlightening and that's something that you can kind of miss when you have a year like last year where everything happened virtually for the prize and I'm really glad that he got to be there and uh, have these conversations and get his book out there a little bit more and that his his win will not be sort of like a footnote that didn't really happen because it wasn't in person I thought that was really nice let's do a quick look 
at the other shortlisted titles that did not win. Uh, in order, there's a passage north by Anuk Ard Pragasam. He, I didn't re quite realize just how young he is. <laughs> I don't know his age, but uh, in person, he looks kind of young and uh i wasn't entirely prepared for that but uh, that is a book that i was really interested in i've heard kind of mixed feedback on it from people who have read it and in discussing the prize this year but it sounds really interesting to me it is another book that is sort of framed around a funeral it is uh, about a journey to a funeral that is the passage north from the title and the excerpt that they read was this sort of visceral description of a funeral pyre and that also really gripped me. And this was a book that I was really interested in, but the excerpt of it really piqued my interest as well. So I will be looking forward, forward to getting to that book at some point. The next one is the only book that would have disappointed me if it had won. It's No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. I do appreciate the way she talks about her book and what she was trying to do and the idea that we are sort of lost in the internet and what real world interactions begin to look like when the internet has sort of taken over your life. I appreciate that. I did not like the execution of it, and it was the only excerpt that did not interest me. It was an excerpt from a point later in the book when after I had already DNF'd it. So I was not familiar with that part of the book, but I it even if I hadn't read it, I don't think it would have interested in me as much. The thing that would have grabbed my attention was would her talking about the book and what she was trying to do, but I just didn't like the execution, certainly not enough to finish it. And every time they talked about the idea that they were looking for a novel that would push the, fo the form of fiction forward, I got a little bit nervous because I think the book that does that the most on the shortlist is probably Patricia Lockwood because of that sort of angle where she is really thinking about how we live our lives online and how we lose a sense of the real world. And that, I, 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 again, I didn't like the execution, but I think arguably you could say that she is the author that was the most forward thinking in terms of form and how the form can relate to the real world. And they also mentioned that they wanted a book that would look to the future. And I think she talked a little bit about how in her mind, the future is now because this is something that has already happened to us. We are already uh, living with the internet inside us. That's the way she put it. And that, again, I feel like the most interesting things about this book are the way you talk about this book. I didn't necessarily like the book itself. So I am glad that it made the shortlist in a way because I appreciate these conversations and I think it sort of pushed the the envelope in terms of me thinking about these things and how I relate to technology just from having the conversation about the book. Wasn't a fan of the book itself, and that's fine. It is what it is. The next finalist is The Fortune Men by Nadifa Muhammad. This is another book that I am really looking forward to. I believe it is going to be released in the U.S. in December, and I am going to be looking for it at my library or an audio on either Libby or Scribd. When it is available, I am really looking forward to it. And, and, and again, this is something that... It was really interesting to hear the author, Nadifa Muhammad, talk about the book and her process of writing it and how it took years and how she did research, uh, because it is based on a true story. It is based on the 1952 trial of a man in Wales for a crime he did not commit. Uh, and obviously, because it is based on a true story, you know what ultimately happens to this man. And I think the fact that it is based on a true story has turned some people off because I I've heard some grumblings um, that because you know what happens, there aren't really any stakes. I think I'm kind of, I, I know the only person I can think of who said something like that was Sean the Book Maniac, and that was not necessarily his point, but um, it, it's an argument I've seen in a couple of different places. But for me, that is actually, that is something that sort of raises the stakes. And I heard a similar complaint lobbied against Hamnet a couple of times where it's because you know the sun is going to die and uh, ultimately inspire in some ways, uh, the creation of Hamlet by his father, William Shakespeare. Some people said that sort of robbed it of a sense of urgency, but to me, the fact that you know that Hamlet is going to die and that his parents are going to experience such grief over his death creates a sense of suspense as you go through. So it's, it's interesting because I feel like knowing what happens with this trial would create that same sense of suspense, at least for me. And I'm really looking forward to it. I think, um, the section that they used in the excerpt was also interesting because it talked about how the, I, I, I assume it's the protagonist, had 
designed a way of walking in his hometown so he wouldn't be noticed by white people around him. And by, by not being noticed, they could not harass him or inflict violence upon him or anything like that. And that really grabbed my attention because it is something that I am somewhat familiar with in my life, but not not really and not in the way that it's talking about because obviously I have not experienced that kind of racial tension and I can usually feel reasonably safe walking down the street because even though I am a gay man people don't necessarily know that just by looking at me it's sort of like a hidden thing that people can be prejudiced against but there are times when I'm walking with my husband or anything like that and you're always conscious of how other people are going to be looking at you and things that you can do to sort of minimize uh any kind of spark or chemistry between you and uh, your husband as you walk down the street because you worry how people will react and if there will be negative consequences to that. So there's this sense of performance, even though all you're doing is walking down the street. And I thought that was, it it hit me (laughs) in a place because I am able to recognize it, but it brought it to another level because it is talking about it in a way that I have not experienced. And I think one of the things that's interesting about this is that you can put yourself in that that person's shoes and understand what that is like, or hopefully. So that is something that really grabbed my attention with that. And again, that is a book that I'm going to be looking forward to reading when it is released in the US. Uh, Obviously, you can order a version from the UK. I can't remember for sure, but I think I prefer the UK cover. But I'm not really looking to purchase it for myself anyway. So it's probably something I'll be looking to get from the library or um, find an audio uh, of it. And we will see how that goes. And then there's Bewilderment by Richard Powers. And I, I keep saying that the only book that would disappoint me if it won was no one is talking about this. And I feel like the reason I say that is because I have actually had an experience with reading that book and it didn't go well. <laughs> I DNF'd it. I am still looking forward to reading Patricia Lockwood's book, Priest Daddy, which is a memoir. Uh, and that book sounds fascinating to me. But I worry that because no one is talking about this, like the conversations about it and what the book is trying to do sounds really interesting. I'm a little bit worried now that I won't like priest daddy's execution however a lot of people in comments have told me that i will anyway we're talking about bewilderment by richard powers and uh i had a sort of aborted attempt to read bewilderment uh overstory his book that won the pulitzer prize i got through the first section and i got a little bit into the second section of the book before i just really wasn't into it i think his writing is fantastic and i think that comes through in the excerpt that they read from the book which is talking about the, the father is looking at his son who is Uh, sort of, I I don't know if neurodivergent is the word, there is no firm diagnosis for what he is. Um, And the father is watching his son sleep and he's thinking about his son's future. And there are parts of that that really felt hard, got me in all of the feels, if you will. And um, I thought that was really beautiful. I think he is a beautiful writer, that depiction of father caring for son and thinking about his son's future and had the ways in which the world will change his son possibly for the worse, possibly for the better. It, it's very real and it was very raw, but I don't know. I, I'm still not convinced that this is a book I want to read. And I've heard enough feedback about it that I think the sort of more out there parts, like the this idea that the father and the son travel to other planets together, it, that seems a little too, <laughs> too out there for me. And I think that's where the overstory, the personal stories, the writing is fantastic. But as soon as it started getting a little outlandish is a bit of a strong word, it started to lose me. And I think bewilderment would be the same thing. So it's probably, it's the only book on the short list, other than no one is talking about this, which I already had a failed attempt at reading, that I would not pick up, if I'm being honest. I think Richard Powers is a fantastic writer, but I am happy to let other people enjoy him. So I wouldn't have been upset if he had won, but... It's just the book that I don't necessarily respond to and uh, I will not be looking for for myself. It is released in the US and the UK. And it is possible that this is the end of the road for Bewilderment in terms of awards conversations because it did not make the shortlist for the National Book Award. We'll have to wait until next year to find out what happens with the Pulitzer Prize. It is re- very rare to win two Pulitzers. So unless something is having a big sea change within the Pulitzer because Colson White has done it recently, uh, I, I don't know, know that it will have a shot with that. We'll see what happens with the New York Times names its 10 best books of the year. I think it's certainly a good contender for that. But in terms of book prizes, for now at least, this seems to be the end of the road for Bewilderment. 
And the final book on the shortlist that did not win uh, is The Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, which I got from the library and I haven't started yet and it's going to be due back soon. So I, I'm in a reading slump right now. So I kind of need to decide what I'm going to do with this. And I really want to read it. I thought the passage that they read was very interesting. And it mentions this woman flying her plane and she's going high in the air. It's cold. And this idea of her, no one knowing... I, I, it almost feels like a spoiler, so I don't quite want to say it, but the way it was written, her flying and this act of rebellion inherent to what she is doing was very captivating. And it made me really want to start this right now since I have it in my house. But uh, So maybe it's going to help me get out of my reading slump. I don't know. I have to finish my uh, Stanley Tucci book that I'm reading before I dive into anything else. But this sounded really interesting and it is a book I'm really looking forward to. I've heard a lot of really great things about this book and it, it will be interesting to see uh, what I think of it when I finally get around to reading it. And um, it's it was a very strong shortlist, once again. I, I think you really can't fault that. Um, and given the story of The Promise and Damon Galgett, he gave a really great speech. I thought he had very interesting things to say about the process of writing and uh, reading and producing art and a little bit even about the way critics respond to him where he talked about how uh, people tend not to think of him as funny but he has a sort of he does have a sort of dark sense of humor uh, and apparently that comes out in the promise which is I'm really looking forward to I hope my library hold of it comes up very soon and he certainly seemed humbled to have won it, it was a, I'm glad I got to actually watch so much of it today because uh, usually since it's in the middle of the workday I don't usually get to follow as closely as I did today and I am looking forward to exploring more of the books and getting to them when they are released in the U.S. and available uh, at my library and and looking into them, it seems like the right book won, having not read it, but based on the conversations I've had with people about the quality of the books and what they're about and hearing excerpts and following the authors and this process of the booker. It, it, it's a long process, the long list to the short list to today and a lot of events and, in, and conversations in between. But I think that's one of the things that makes the booker interesting. They really build a sense of momentum along the way. And that is one of the things that makes it fun to follow. And because even when you haven't read one of the books, you do feel like you got to know it a little bit. And I'm feel I do feel like I'm happy for Damon Galgett and uh, his win. And I'm really looking forward to reading the book even more now than I w was yesterday. So I'd love to hear what you think about this. Are you happy that Damon Galgett won? Are you sad that Damon Galgett won? Were you rooting for one of the other books? Were you rooting for something from the long list? Or was there something that you thought was completely left out. I know there was a little bit of uh, surprise about the long list and I would love to hear what you have to say about it in the comment section down below and we now get to look forward to the National Book Award announcement which will be coming later this month and Booker 2022 eventually. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you for your time and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.